Crafts are a legacy that characterizes certain regions or locations within a country. In addition, sometimes they reflect a person's character or way through their manual creations in each piece, which are unique from each other. There is a distinctive detail that sets them apart from serial or mass-produced products. In El Salvador, there are interesting places where you may find great ingenuity, which results in the creation of interesting crafts, creations of talented artisans. These sites make up tourist route known as the Artisan Route. The use of intense colors, wood, clay and implementation of weapon styles on textile products identify the municipalities that make up this interesting route, which specializes in handicrafts. Agility and skillfulness are gifts of these traditional artisans. In El Salvador, it is reflected in the work of its people when creating various crafts. Among them, we must mention Ilo Vasco miniatures, little sculptures made with clay that have been done for many generations. The story began in 1925, when Dominga Herrera switched from making utilitarian ceramics to the creative ones. At the province of Cuscatlan, you will find one of the most important destinations of the artisan route, Suchitoto. Due to its art and folk traditions, this town is known as the cradle of history and culture in El Salvador. This town has a colonial look and feeling. It has been rebuilt after being badly hit by the Salvadorian Civil War. The tranquil pace of Suchitoto emanates from the central square, where you will also find the beautiful Church of Santa Lucia. The town known as the place of birds and flowers offers visitors a great place to relax. Portals surround the town square. Here, locals offer their crafts to visitors. La Casa de la Abuela is one of the interesting places to visit. Here you will find a knot exhibit and it also functions as a shop, where you may buy locally produced crafts. These crafts are also important from other provinces. Some of them carved creations of artisans that offer another variety of crafts. At this place, which opened in 2008, you may find crafts created with material such as ceramics, wooden clay at affordable prices. They may be purchased by travelers who want to take back home a souvenir of their trip. In Suchitoto, in addition to producing its own crafts, it also serves as a showcase where other craftsmen display their creations. According to statistics, Suchitoto's most important economic activities are tourism and handcrafts. Data shows that the town of birds and flowers is one of the most visited sites for national and international tourists. This city at the municipality of Cuscatlan was included in the list of beneficiaries of Fomilenio, a program that seeks to reduce poverty in northern El Salvador. Product development included fruit plantations along with crafts and tourism projects. To put a delicious twist to the tour, visitors may enjoy sweets prepared using traditional methods, which are unique to the country. These candies are a tradition of El Salvador and date back to the introduction of the sugar cane by the Spanish during the colonial times. Main ingredients include brown sugar and local fruits. Suchitoto is the hometown of Salvadorian filmmaker Alejandro Cotto. It has an altitude of 388 meters above sea level, thus having a warm climate. From here, you may see panoramic views of the Cerrón Grande Reservoir, known as Lake Suchitlán. Fifty kilometers from San Salvador, is the town of San Sebastián, one of 13 provinces of the Department of San Vicente, located in central El Salvador. This city is also part of an artisan route, thanks to the talent of many of its residents, who dedicate themselves to creating products using manual looms, making these crafts an important source of income for the town. Textiles have become a local heritage to Bataneco, as the inhabitants of San Sebastián are often referred. Webbing workshops were promoted 60 years ago, 
and this led to this craft becoming an important economic activity for this town. Even though basic looms have been used for a long time, history says that the Spanish were the ones that introduced the treadle loom that is used today. This job requires great agility, strength, and physical skills due to required coordinated movement of arms and legs. Workers involved in this activity are mostly men. Yarns of different colors are placed in the loom, then inserted in a moving piece called shuttle, which looks like a miniature version of a wooden canoe. These pieces hold the curse of the loom, which is powered by movement of hands and feet, thus crisscrossing fibers creating the fabric that will later be used as raw material for many crafts including San Sebastián famous hammock. San Sebastián's women are responsible for creating the thread rope on a lake, which are called canillas. Many of the residents of this municipality dedicate themselves to this craft from an early age. It is an occupation inherited from generation to generation. Among the products manufactured from this textile are blankets, bed spreads, curtains, fabrics to make traditional clothing and colorful hammocks. La Palma, at the province of Chalatenango, is another very symbolic site of the artisan route thanks to the pioneering work of an artist who created a unique technique. My name is Fernando Yor. I was born on the 7th of April of 1949 in San Salvador. El Salvador. I started to paint quadros with reminiscences of Mayas. The first obstacle I had was my dad, who told me that I couldn't live with that. So, I was there Yo sentía de que sí, porque yo sentía que Dios me había dado ese talento, que yo había recibido de Dios ese talento de pintar y que debía desarrollarlo. Bueno, nosotros de pequeños íbamos a La Palma con mi papá que tenía una, un terreno allá. De pequeños, a mí siempre me gustó ese lugar. Yo cuando íbamos a La Palma me ponía a hacer esculturitas en la, semilla, en la cáscara del pino, me ponía con una navaja a hacer figuras y siempre me gustó ese ambiente. Entonces, La Palma, yo sentí que aquí en la ciudad, para pintar en la ciudad, sentía mucho ruido, mucho obstáculo, mucho materialismo, mucha bulla, ¿no? Entonces yo necesitaba un lugar calmado, tranquilo, lleno de naturaleza, que me inspirara para desarrollar mi talento, para desarrollar mi pintura. Y entonces fue que decidí irme a La Palma, pero antes de irme a La Palma, hice unos unos, unas, 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 unas exposiciones aquí en El Salvador, una en la Galería Forma de, de Julita Díaz y una en el Bigote Rosado de Fina Gómez. Y hice, lo que hice aquí en El Salvador era arte abstracto, eran collages, cosas pegadas, madera pegada sobre madera, hierro pegado sobre madera, y con ese dinero que gané esas exposiciones me fui a La Palma. Llegué a La Palma y alquilé una casita que en ese tiempo me costaba 10 colones el mes. Entonces, estando ahí en esa casita, comencé a trabajar, primero comencé a trabajar el barro, y después, viendo a un niño que estaba, que estaba raspando una semilla de cupinol en el suelo, le pregunté qué estaba haciendo, y me dijo, raspando una semilla de cupinol. Entonces le dije, enseñámela. Entonces me la enseñó, y yo pensé, ve, aquí se puede hacer un cuadro miniatura en esta semilla de cupinol. Entonces así fue como empecé a trabajar en la semilla. Estaba trabajando en la semillita, conocí a una bella mujer, que es mi esposa, con, lo, con la cual me casé. Y estando casado, mi papá me dijo, te, mira yo, ya veo que estás formal, que estás trabajando, entonces te podés ir a la casa que él tenía ahí en La Palma. Entonces nos mudamos a la casa que quedaba en este terreno, en donde actualmente tengo mi casa yo también. Entonces ese terreno lleno de pinos, ahí comencé a trabajar la semilla, y la gente del pueblo comenzó a acercarse. Primero se llegó, llegó la familia de ella, después los jóvenes, muchachos, muchachas, que llegaban, que 
porque en La Palma no había nada de trabajo. En La Palma solo había la, 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 la agricultura tradicional del frijol y del maíz. Y los jóvenes no tenían nada que hacer, pero se comenzaron a interesar en lo que yo estaba haciendo. Entonces fue, fue así que empezaron a llegar los jóvenes, señores, señoras, entonces que estaban interesados en aprender. Entonces yo decidí, y le, decidí poner, compartir con ellos mis dibujos, compartir con ellos todos mis dibujos. Yo se los ponía en unos papeles y los pegaba en la pared y también les hacía unas plantillas. Y con eso comenzaban a dibujar. Comenzamos a trabajar entonces, después de la semilla, comenzamos a trabajar la madera, la madera de pino. En la madera de pino trabajábamos con la técnica del rápido graf y la témpera y después barnizado, con barniz marino. Entonces ellos comenzaron a aprender y se fue haciendo grande el número. Y basado en mis principios cristianos, organicé una cooperativa que le puse el nombre de la cooperativa de la semilla de Dios. La cooperativa la fundé en 1977. Ellos ya habían aprendido mis técnicas, ya habían aprendido mis dibujos y se organizaron en esa cooperativa, que al mismo tiempo sirvió de escuela, porque ahí la gente aprendía y se iba a sus casas a, a trabajar en familia. Bueno, la obra más importante para mí ha sido haber creado una comunidad artesanal que le dio, que le dio a la palma que, con lo que le di a La Palma una identidad cultural. Haber creado esa comunidad artesanal ha sido para mí la obra más importante de mi vida.